So now we have to do a little mini detour into a topic in statistics. And that topic is what is known as the law of large numbers, sometimes also called the law of averages. And the idea here is that if we have a large number of what are called independent events, so if we have a large number of independent events, something like a coin flip, okay, then as the number of tries increases, the fraction of them that will come up heads, for instance, gets very, very, very close to 50% as you get to a larger and larger number. So the fraction of tries in our set will converge to the underlying probability. So for instance, if you have one coin flip, it's either a head or a tail. There's no sort of way to have it come up 50% heads and 50% tails, even though we know in some sense that's what the underlying probability is. If we have so we have one flip, we either have heads or tails. There's no way to even have it come out 50-50. If we have two flips, we could have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And notice there's a good chance that it'll come out exactly 50-50. This same sort of logic applies if we keep on going down and calculating this out. The chance that we'll come very close to 50% heads and 50% tails gets pretty large when we have an extremely large number of trials. Why are we bringing this in? This is what makes insurance work. If the insurable event, say something like the probability that you get um, skin cancer, or the probability that a house burns down, or the probability that someone gets in an auto accident, if the insurable event is independent. What do I mean by independent? What I mean by that is if I have my house burned down, it doesn't significantly change the odds that your house is going to burn down this year. Or if I get in a traffic accident, it doesn't affect the likelihood that someone in Los Angeles also gets in a traffic accident this year. So independent means there's no relationship between two events. No correlation, we would say. So, if the insurable event is independent, the insurance company can know with a high degree of certainty how much money it's going to have to pay out. back to this issue of risk versus uncertainty, there's a sort of long quote, and I'm not going to replicate it, but when you're dealing with events, you can see that if we have sort of a large enough number of people, we're pretty darn sure we know what fraction of them will get a certain medical condition, or what their average length of life will be, or something like that. So essentially, once you have enough tries, once you have enough people that you're insuring, the actual riskiness of 
running an insurance company becomes very low. Okay. This is all built on if things are independent. For some types of insurance, the event is not independent. So it might be that, you know, if we're talking ordinary house fires, the likelihood of my house burning down doesn't affect the likelihood of your house burning down. Or if I have, you know, an auto accident, it doesn't affect your likelihood of having an auto accident. But with other things, like hurricanes or earthquakes, by their very nature, they affect millions of people all at the same time. So you might see that for many years, you know, 10 years in a row or something, nobody has any losses from earthquakes in California. And then comes a big earthquake and there's 20 or 30 or 40 billion dollars worth of losses. So insurance markets work well when the underlying events are independent. When the underlying events are correlated or dependent, insurance markets don't work very well. So that's why it's often a lot easier to get insurance for events like simple life insurance or health insurance or car insurance or homeowners insurance than it is something like flood insurance or hurricane insurance or earthquake insurance. Because again, by their very nature, those things are very unpredictable, very hard for the insurance company to plan around. It's going to turn out that this same rule, the law of large numbers, is going to actually help us when thinking about investment. And so that'll be our next topic.